This video about the best cheese for pizza is sponsored by Squarespace, the best way to build and run a website if you don't want to have to do all the hard stuff yourself. Get 10% off your first site with my link and code in the description. Let's start with the obvious, which is that mozzarella is the best cheese for pizza, says science. Seriously, in this 2014 study, researchers found that only mozzarella or a cheese blend based on mozzarella will provide the browning and stretching properties that most people expect of pizza. But what kind of mozzarella? Mozzarella comes in some different forms. I'm going to show you experiments with five of them. To me, there is a clear winner, but certainly it depends on your tastes and what style of pizza you're trying to make. Let's start with mozzarella in its purest form, fresh mozzarella. What exactly is fresh mozz? Well, let's ask an expert. So I, I'm John Lucy. I'm a professor here in the food science department here at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Yeah, it's kind of funny that we're talking to an Irishman living in the American Midwest about an Italian cheese, but Dr. Lucy knows his stuff, and they know from cheese in Wisconsin. But yeah, he says, of course, historically, mozza is from Italy. In many cases, they probably think it was made originally from water buffalo. So that mozzarella would look more like the fresh mozzarella that we might use maybe on salads and things like that, kind of soft, high moisture, milky, because of the water buffalo produces milk that's a lot of fat, high fat product. I always think that fresh mozz tastes like milk solidified, which is to say it's sweet, it's fresh, it's subtle, and most significantly for pizza making, it is wet. You can see some of the whey spilling out of there before I've even cut into it. And yeah, most people usually cut or tear fresh mozz rather than shred it, because watch what happens when I shred it. It just schmooshes. It's too soft. She cannot take the strain, Captain. Now I'm gonna put this on a pizza, and I'm doing what you could call a New York-style pizza, which is very wide and very thin, and has as a solid sheet of cheese across the entire top. I will bake it on my preheated pizza steel at 550 Fahrenheit convection, that's like 290C, that's about as hot as anyone can get a home oven, and that looks pretty nice, but when I bite into it, that pizza is wet. Not moist, wet. The crust is unappetizingly soggy. There is simply too much water in fresh mozz for this style of pizza. There are, of course, other styles of pizza, and you can get a really good one right here in beautiful Macon, Georgia at Just Tapped. We're a long way from Naples, but Corey here is making a damn fine Neapolitan-style pizza. That sauce is just pureed San Marzano tomatoes straight out of the can with a little seasoning in it. On goes some fresh basil leaves, and here comes the fresh mozzarella. He likes to put on big chunks over the basil to protect it, but note how he is not covering that pizza with cheese. I would say the biggest single difference between Neapolitan style and New York style is this. Neapolitan style has much less cheese, splotches of cheese, rather than a sheet of cheese. Why? Because Neapolitan style is made with fresh mozz, and you can't put too much fresh mozz on a pizza without it getting soggy. By the way, check out these tabletop ovens they've got it just tapped. 700 Fahrenheit convection. That gets you a product strikingly similar to that from a wood-fired brick oven. This innovation is rapidly improving the quality of barroom pizza all over the world, and for that I am grateful. Delicious. But say you want to make a different style of pizza. You might want to turn to the kind of mozzarella that they developed not in Italy, but right here in the United States. It was after the Second World War when American soldiers who'd fought their way through Italy brought their new taste for pizza home to big dairy-producing regions like Wisconsin, where Dr. Lucy is. In the broader post-war drive toward mass production, they found that fresh mozz simply had problems. It's just too wet and soft to work with on a commercial scale. It's messy, and it's not very shelf-stable. So, American cheesemakers in the Midwest invented low-moisture, part-skim mozzarella, often referred to in the cheese industry simply as pizza cheese. By removing some of the fat and a lot of the whey, they got a firmer, more stable product that's better for mass production. How'd they get the moisture out? You standardize the milk to a little bit lower fat content. That's the first step. The, the process then involves adding rennet, which is an enzyme that coagulates the milk, but it also adds particular bacterial cultures that ferment the lactose that's present in the milk, and they drop the pH down. They'll then take it and they'll put it into a cooker or stretcher, and then they'll warm it up. Um, the core temperature is probably around 60 degrees C, um, and they'll heat it up to that kind of temperature. It's kind of like a heating or a pasteurizing type of step. It inactivates some of the bacteria and enzymes in the product, and it, it helps to extend the shelf life. And check out the New York-style pizza I made with it. Nice browning on the cheese, crust is crispy and dry, the cheese itself is firmer and almost has a little snap to it when it's cooled down a little bit. That snap is why I love lukewarm pizza. 
Okay, now you might be wondering, why not just use fresh mozz and then squeeze the moisture out, which you can do. You just slice it up, you press on it with some paper towels or something, and now that is much drier. But let's go back to what Dr. Lucy was saying. The manufacturers of low moisture mozz do not squeeze the moisture out physically, they do it chemically. First they do it with the enzyme rennet, which is what all cheese starts with, and then they squeeze out more moisture with acid, and that affects the taste, not just the texture. With a more traditional low moisture piece, pizza cheese like this one made by Grande in Wisconsin, they're acidifying the cheese with bacteria fermentation. Palio, another very popular pizza cheese made in the New York area, does it with vinegar instead. So historically, if you think about its roots of some of these cheeses, is vinegar or sour wine would have been very common product around to acidify rather than adding some bacteria to do it. So it's very common. But regardless of how you acidify it, low moisture mozzarella has a sharper taste than the fresh stuff. And you cannot replicate that taste by just squeezing the water out of fresh mozz. And those more acidic qualities are key to New York style pizza, which is my main jam. Another feature of New York style pizza is that it's often made with full fat low moisture mozzarella, not part skim. If you go to pizzamaking.com, a lot of the New York style pizza cooks there refer to it by the initialism WMLM, whole milk low moisture. Relative to the part skim kind, this is a much harder product to find in grocery stores. And Dr. Lucy says there's a reason for that. The first being the grease layer that you can get from using a higher fat cheese. That might not be what everybody really likes. You know, in terms of the general consumers, they might not want to be too greasy on the pizza. The second thing is too, is that when you take out the, the fat, the cheese tends to be firmer. If you ever bought the low moisture parts came in a store, you'll see it's quite firm when it's young. And it's easy to cut, it's easy to shred. So the machine, what we call the machinability factor for large scale manufacture or large scale conversion into shreds is a lot easier. All that said, I am hardly the only person who prefers the rich flavor that you get from a full fat cheese. But where do you get it? If it's not in the cheese case at the grocery store, they might have it at the deli counter, which is where I got this. Boar's Head Whole Milk Low Moisture Cheese. When I bake a pizza with this, yeah, I get some grease, but to me, flavor-wise, that is absolutely delicious. Really superior to the part skim cheese. Though the Boar's Head brand is not my favorite pizza cheese, I can't get my favorite pizza cheese anymore. I used to use this full fat, low moisture Galbani mozz that they sold molded into sticks for string cheese. This is an unexpected form in which you might be able to get the product that you're after. That was the best cheese for pizza I was ever able to buy at my grocery store here in Macon, Georgia. But it seems Galbani is only selling the part skim sticks now, and when I requested an interview with them about all of this, they declined. Whenever I talk about my struggle to find full fat, low moisture mozzarella here in my small southern city, I always get people telling me that I should buy this. Indeed, I can buy this here, and it it is a full fat mozz. Palio is a very popular brand with New York style pizza joints, but this is not Palio's low moisture cheese. This is. They only sell it in giant loafs for commercial use. So if you're going to get it from a store, you're going to get it at the deli counter. That is not this. I'm not totally sure what this is, but if you put it side by side with a true low moisture mozz, you can see how much softer and wetter it is. I would call it medium moisture, and I don't really like it for pizza. It has this weird property where it rises a lot in the oven, which tends to make it boil over, and that pizza is a little bit wet. I'm also not wild about the flavor either. I don't know what this cheese is that they sell retail, but is not the same cheese that they sell in big eight pound loafs to pizza shops. If you don't believe me, look, they don't even have the same nutritional facts listed. It's not the same product. I have sent many queries about this to both Palio and to its parent company, Kraft Heinz, and I have received no response across months. If you live in the US, there is one place where you almost certainly can find whole milk low moisture mozz, and that is Walmart. They make this. I do not think it's a very good cheese, but at least it's the right style, assuming that this is the style that you're after, which I usually am. But if you live in a big city, you might have lots of better options. Certainly, you can always fall back on the part skim low moisture mozz, which you might like better anyway, and it's ubiquitous. Also ubiquitous is the same cheese sold in pre-shredded form, which is the last option we shall explore today. It's very tempting. You just buy a bag, open it up, and shake it on, but there's a problem. This bag doesn't just contain cheese, it also contains an anti caking blend, in this case cornstarch, potato starch, and calcium sulfate. If you didn't add an anti-caking agent, whether it's starch or something else to it, they, you put it in a bag and if you, you know, if you pack that bag away in the fridge, after a while it just kind of collects as a ball. 
Yeah, so the anti-caking powder can prevent that from happening, but there is a catch. It can interfere with the melting and browning of the cheese. Those materials themselves might not um, melt at the temperatures that we're doing the pizza baking at. And if there's too much on, it's almost like you've kind of battered or breaded your shreds, that the outside doesn't really melt, even if the inside cheese wants to melt at the temperature. So that could be one issue. This, the second issue is they may also soak up moisture that is released from during the, the baking process. And because they soak up the moisture, the, the moisture, the, the, the surface becomes too dry. And if it becomes too dry, then you're more likely to have it like almost like you're toasting it. And the latter scenario is clearly what happened to my pie here. By the time that pizza was done, the pre-shredded cheese was burned. This does not mean that you can't make a good pizza with pre-shredded cheese. You absolutely can. Dr. Lucy says this is simply a quality control issue at the factory. Some producers just put in way too much of that anti-caking mix. Maybe they don't care that it's gonna mess up your pizza. They just care about how their product looks on the shelf. All I can tell you is that if one brand of cheese isn't working for you, try another. There's lots of options and they're all made in slightly different ways. Pizza in its purest form is such a simple thing. And like all simple things, very small differences in ingredient quality can make a really, really big difference in the final product. And I'd say that a good website is usually a pretty simple thing too, especially if you're talking about a simple portfolio website like mine, or maybe a website for your podcast or for your restaurant or your band. If you're making a simple thing, every element of it needs to be right. You need a clear and elegant design. It needs to look good on mobile or on desktop. And Squarespace takes care of all of these things for you. All you do is fly your pictures and your words into their templates and like, that's it. They host the site for you, they take care of the domain registration if a custom domain is a thing that you want. And if you're gonna sell things or take reservations or something on your site, they handle all the backend technicals of that. It's a simple, elegant solution for an elegant site. And you can start building yours for free right now at squarespace.com. But when you're ready to pay for a custom domain or to actually publish your site, do us both a favor and go to squarespace.com slash ragusia you'll save 10%. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring the video, and legit, good luck trying to find the right cheese for your pizza. And really, when you do and you bake your pizza, please tag me on it. These people do on Instagram. It's awesome. I love it.